That's the music that uh, St. Michael the Archangel and all the good angels are probably praying <laughs> in, the, in the background when they stomped Satan and threw him out of, Love it. Uh, out of heaven. And that's also probably the music that was heard by the, the fallen angels when our Lord died and rose from the dead. This is the Terry and Jesse show. This is the flagship show which launched Virgin Most Powerful Radio several years ago. And I'm on duty. Terry, what about you? Yes, I'm on duty. And before I give people the news about what we're going to be talking about, I want to remind you, everybody, Father Don Calloway on Divine Mercy Weekend, he's going to be giving some talks here on Virgin Most Powerful Radio starting at 11 o'clock Pacific Coast time on Saturday. That's uh, 4 11 21. So join us. It's free. Also, on May 15th, we're going to have another seminar online for evangelization for the third millennial with myself. And then mark your calendar for Jesse. He's coming for the annual men's conference. That's June 12th, 2021. And Eddie Chavez from Jesus 911, who's been suffering greatly this past year, is going to be here to talk about redemptive suffering. Also, Jess... Just a quick note, Roe vs. Wade, we promoted that movie that just came out. Well, we're going to play it. We're going to take the Blessed Sacrament out of our church, and Sunday at 6 p.m., all of our pro-lifers and people can come and, and watch that new movie here at the Sacred Heart Chapel on Sunday. Uh, so please consider coming on Sunday for that. Roe vs. Wade, 4 21 Okay, Jess, today's topics, I mean, can you imagine this first topic, Jess? CNN... It says in the news that there's a piece, there's no consensus criteria for assigning sex at birth. You know, Jesse, for having an educated culture, (laughs) man, we're pretty stupid. I'm sorry. A a guy who's been a farmer 200 years ago, never went to school in his life, knows more about this issue than uh, the modern world today. Also, we're going to be talking about a great new organization. I'm so happy it's coming around. They're planning to provide parents with tools to combat the woke dick doctrinization in schools. In other words, people, we've been t- having, we've been mesmerized in our school system and making kids hate this country, hate God, and now we're going to ha- fight back with this organization. Yep. So thanks, it's thanks to God. Yeah, and then just good news about the Supreme Court. We got a uh, regarding a religious freedom and evangelization on the campuses. I'm so happy to see that. And then we'll final we'll finalize with. This is Happy Easter Wednesday, and we have to talk about our Lord's new body. When he died on the cross and resurrected, here we are 2,000 years later. So it's going to be a game full changer. show. Oh, it's a game changer, Jess. You nailed it. Yeah. Terry, also the month of April mm-hmm. is the month of the Holy Eucharist versus Catholics. And so in the month of April, you might make a commitment to go to Mass a little more frequently or to spend some Good extra idea. time before the Blessed Sacrament. Yeah. This is the month of the Holy Eucharist in Roman Catholicism worldwide. And let's remember that Jesus Christ, he waits for us in the tabernacle of every Catholic church. Let's make some time to go more often in the month of April. And, uh, and remember that uh, Jesus Christ is reigning right now in his Eucharistic reign. And we're going to talk a lot about that at the end of the show, the last segment. But just talking about reign, let's let's read some, uh, let's get some gospel, let's get some soul food into our souls right now, brother. Yeah, the, the resurrection is tied in with the Eucharist as today's gospel shows us. Mm-hmm. Luke chapter 24, speak, Lord, your servants are listening. Mm-hmm. That very day, the first day, by the way, that's Sunday for the Jews. That first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, so there's apologetics there, they're debating issues. Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. Because Jesus is God, he could he could cause, you know, temporary suspension of the faculty so you can't recognize him. It says, he asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped looking downcast. In other words, they're depressed. One of them named Cleopas said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? And they said to him, the things that happened to Jesus and Nazarene who was a prophet mighty indeed in word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over 
to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described. But him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. So he gave them a, a basic uh, Bible timeline uh, you know, journey through the scriptures, uh, Je- Genesis to Jesus course. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly heaven and the day is almost over. By the way, that's a famous prayer by Padre Pio for people that suffer from depression. If you want to find it, it's called Stay With Us. Look it up in the Internet. It's a, it's a prayer that fi- combats depression. And it goes on, our Lord goes on and says, So he went in to stay with them, and it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. So notice, how did the first disciples recognize the resurrected Christ? It was at the first Mass. When Mass was celebrated at the words of consecration, their spiritual eyes were open, and they saw the risen Christ. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the eleven and those that were with them saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this goes to show you that, again, the Eucharist has everything to do with us being raised from the Mm -hmm. dead. That's even the promise in John chapter 6, that he will raise us up on the last day for those of us that eat his resurrection. And by the way, when we receive the Holy Eucharist, in case you're wondering, we receive the body of the resurrected Lord, not not the not the body that was, you know, that was you see on the cross that was bruised and beaten and, and, and derided and defiled. We received the resurrected, glorified Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist. And also something very interesting that, that jumps out at me. Um, when, uh, when Jesus Christ says that, that he was a man that did mighty deeds and words, this is the way they describe the prophets in the Old Testament, that they do mighty deeds and words. So they're essentially saying that Jesus Christ comes from the line of prophets, but he's the greatest prophet. Also in verse 21, it says that the, the reason Christ came was to redeem Israel. In other words, redeem them from their sins. But the Jews thought about political redemption. He's going to re- re- redeem us from political subjugation from the Romans. No, it's way beyond that. It's way beyond Roman oppression. He wants to redeem us from death, hell, and the grave. Also, Jesus Christ in verse 27 gives an overview of salvation history from the Old Testament, showing his entire life throughout the Old Testament. And also in verse 30, where it says that he took, blessed, broke, and gave. Again, this sequence follows the Last Supper, which is the first Mass. And so here, when Christ celebrates Mass again for these two disciples, the disciples, in a spiritual way, now their eyes are open, and in the Eucharist, they're able to see now the risen Christ. And then it also ends in verse 35, the same way. It says, in the breaking of the bread, what does the breaking of the bread mean? This is a description of the sacred liturgy or the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And so this is the way God has given us the grace to believe and see the resurrected Christ. Terry? Well said, Jesse. The only thing I want to add is the the entrance antiphon for today's Mass got me excited, bro. It says, come, you blessed of my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. 
Alleluia. We're an Alleluia church, Jess, and, and this is so beautiful. Hey, Jess, I just want to mention something real quick before we come back to talk about some craziness at CNN. Uh, I want to pray for a theologian who was a dissenter that St. John Paul II had to uh, take out of the Catholic uh, theologian. Uh, his name is uh, Hans Kuhn, Swiss born. He died at age 93, so I'd like to say a prayer. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let the perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. I feel bad because he was constantly at odds with the Catholic Church's moral teachings, kind of like Father James Martin is today. Now, St. John Paul II got rid of him in 79 and said, you know, your teachings are not in line with the Catholic faith. With all humility, I'd like to ask Pope Francis to do the same thing to Father James Martin because Hans Kuhn is, did so much damage to the moral teachings of the church, just like James Martin is doing regarding homosexuality. So I'm just asking the Holy Father to follow his predecessor, St. John Paul II. And when a, when a theologian is teaching as a Catholic priest or bishop, and it's not aligned with the church teachings, I'm just asking, hey, get rid of him. That's all. Tell him he can't be a Catholic theologian. Hey, Jess, when we come back, we're going to talk about some craziness over at CNN regarding the sex at birth issue and folks you won't believe what they're going to tell us because i could have told them a long time ago that they're all wet but you know what in our culture we're all mixed up and i'll prove it when we come back on the terry and jesse show on virgin most powerful radio don't turn that dial welcome back to the terry and jesse show to join the conversation call 888-526- Now, here's Terry and Jesse. So what else is going on at the CNN, (laughs) a communist news network? (laughs) Terry, here's the problem with a lot of these, uh, the liberals, the leftists that talk about follow the science. They follow the science at their convenience. And what do I mean by that? Their narrative. CNN, they have a straight news piece the other day. It says... Quote, there is no consensus criteria for assigning sex at birth. Are you kidding? Close quote. This is about as common. I mean, you could be a high school dropout and you can tell who's a boy and who's a girl uh, when you take a look at them and and, and, uh, once they've been born. Yeah. But again, CNN, it says here, a Tuesday CNN, I, I call it the Communist News Network news story, stated as fact that there's no consensus criteria for assigning sex at birth without attribution. The CNN story written by breaking news reporter Devon Cole was about Republican South Dakota Governor Christy Noem's battle with the state lawmakers. Uh, Cole wrote, Devon Cole wrote, it's not possible to know a person's gender identity at birth and there's no consensus criteria for assigning sex at birth without attribution. Yeah. Uh, He did not immediately respond to a request for a comment for the Daily Caller News Foundation. And the story noted that biological sex is a disputed term that refers to the sex as listed on the student's original birth certificates. And so, again, CNN is reporting this. uh, and, And Devon Cole wrote that the executive orders do not explicitly mention transgender athletes they are talking about to Christy Noem's executive orders. They referenced the supposed harms of the participation of males and women athletics, an echo of the transphobic claim cited in other similar legislative initiatives that transgender women are not women. Obviously, CNN did not immediately respond to a request for comment from the Daily Caller News Foundation. Terry, we have we have reached a point of absurdity here yeah. in our in our culture where you have people that are you know college educated people that don't know the difference and the deny the science yeah, ignorant uh, be, be, be behind uh, the fact that there's a difference between men and women boys and girls uh, well, th- 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 this is a feelings based exactly. movement not a fact based movement it's a feeling based movement and it reminds me Terry, of the 1975 song remember feelings Feelings, oh, yeah. nothing more than feelings. feelings. That's exactly the song of the left. And you know, Jesse, Bishop Sheen nailed it in his quote of the day. 
Let me just, yeah, full, full Sheen ahead. I, I got this quote because of this story. I said, I need to find what Sheen has to say. And here's what he says about justification. Think about what CNN just said. And here's what Sheen says. Most people justify the way they live. That is to say, instead of fitting their philosophy, their lives to a philosophy, here, here's the cash value, they invent a philosophy to fit their lives. So what are they inventing? Feelings. That's their feelings. I feel I'm six foot five when I'm only five foot five. Who cares what you really are? My feelings tell me I'm six foot five. This is the craziness of the world. And Bishop Sheen pointed out that when when you do this, you throw God out of the picture. It's all about me, myself, and I. And I think what CNN is doing is a real disservice to their listeners because they're lying. It's not true. There's a male and a female. That's the way God made it. And I, I can't say it any clearer, Jess. So when I read this article, I just said to myself, Really? If I would have read this even 30 years ago, Jesse, I would have said, come on, who's going to say that? Things have changed, brother, for the worse. And uh, again, as John the Apostle says in 2 John 1, 7, he says, many deceivers have gone out into the world. Think about that. There you go. Many deceivers have gone out into the world. CNN is one of those deceivers. Yeah. And by the way, they follow the 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 great deceiver who is satan in revelation chapter 12 verse 9 satan is called the deceiver of the world terry yeah and when when cnn is using their their media muscle to try to confound the issue something so clear from biology and from natural law and from divine positive law that a man is a man in all respects and a woman is a woman in all in all respects anybody who's going to teach something different this is what saint paul would call a doctrine of demons. And Jesse, this is really simple. It's really as simple as this. There's good and there's evil, okay? It's black and white. This is so clear. And we have to just say that, what's our narrative? Our narrative is Jesus Christ and following his truth and his salvation. What's the narrative of the world? Again, feelings, what I want, you know, it's my way. And like I said, I've said this a hundred times on the air. There's a song they sing in hell. And then CNN, you're going to sing this song in hell when you say, I did it my way. And there's a song we sing in heaven. I did it his way. That's the bottom line. It's, it doesn't get any clearer. Good and evil are out there. And you know what, Jess? I've never in my lifetime have seen the clarity between good and evil as today. It's, it's, it's clear. Yeah, and uh, the catechism says that the devil in paragraph 407 mm-hmm. He goes after education, m- politics, course. and morality. Yep. So this is a moral teaching. The devil goes after those in positions to teach about morality, like CNN. Mm-hmm. This, with it. And so the devil goes after these networks. And, uh, and, and the fact is, Terry, is that this, this gender ideology, it contradicts basic biology. Again, this is the same progressive movement. That you know, once a time, once upon a time during the uh, during the French Enlightenment, they were saying that they worship the God of Reason to the exclusion of the God of Religion. Well, guess what? Now they're singing a different tune because now they want us people of faith to disregard the science because science disproves their gender ideology. Because the fact is, human sexuality is an objective, biological, binary fact. That's right. XY and XX are the genetic markers of health, (laughs) not genetic markers of disorder. You may see the facts mean nothing. What you just gave, Jax, are the facts about life, okay? But they're not interested in that. It's my feelings. It's what I want to feel. It's that song again. That's in 1975. Yeah. Feelings. You know, nothing, but nothing more, more than feeling. I remember the song. <laughs> yeah, it was. I, I looked it up. It was played by Morris Albert in 1975. Terry, that's the song of the left right now. They don't. They don't go by fact or reason or intellect or yeah. divine revelation. It's feelings. And, and Jesse, that fits right into what we're talking about uh, with this new organization planning to oh, yeah, provide yeah. parents. Because what we have to do is we have to fight back. Just for 30 years, our schools have been indoctrinating. You've talked about this in some of your books, indoctrinating our kids to hate America, to hate God, and to hate any moral teachings and to just do what you feel like you want to do. And so this new organization plans to provide parents with tools to combat 
the woke indoctrination in the schools. It's about time, Jesse, we fight back. Yeah, and this is the ground. This is something from ground the ground, level. from the ground level. Yeah. Like uh, uh, President Trump tried to do it from the White House, and yeah. they kept fighting him tooth and nail. Yeah. But this is now a grassroots movement of parents, and it's called the Parents Defending Education, or the PDE. Wow. And again, it aims to build a large nonpartisan network of parents yep. committed yeah. to depoliticizing the classroom. All right. Uh, and the group is being funded by the a founder and the president of Speech First, a free speech membership organization. I'd love him. Uh, it's also co-developed by a former professor and an investigative reporter. Two good and the, organiz- the organization yeah. is going to teach parents how they can understand what's happening in their children's classrooms. Specifically, the group will teach parents how to document abuses and extremism in their schools and how they can begin exercising their influence and oversight with their school. By the way, this is a very Catholic principle Absolutely. that, that parents are the primary educators of their children. Yep. So what they're doing is completely in line with Catholics uh, teaching yep. uh, in terms of, of parent and family life. And uh, Terry, the reason is, is because uh, we have to fight back against this critical race theory. Absolutely. That's, that's, uh, and we have to empower parents to combat the entire woke indoctrination that's been happening from kindergarten to 12th grade. They're trying to teach our kids that this is an evil country, that we're a country full of racists. Yep. And I'm glad to see this PDE, Parents Defending Education. I love it. They're, they're training parents on how to put schools and officials on the spot, gain media attention, get involved with school boards and other oversight bodies, and make sure the school knows there will be consequences for indoctrination and radicalism in the classroom. The founder and president, Nicole Neely, Neely sounds like a Catholic to me, that's Irish, told the Daily Wire that the group was designed to solve issues of indoctrination by getting parents more involved. Kudos to them, Terry. That that is the key, because if you're a parent who's disturbed by what you see the children have for in their classrooms, uh, then you need to you need to join up with these folks. And I'm I'm very impressed with what they're doing. And you know, Jesse, it just seems like the liberals. And I mean, I, I just be honest with you. I'm a I'm I'm a right winger. Okay, I'll say it right on the air. I am. <laughs> and the reason I'm a right winger is because I want the right I want the right thing. I don't want a, a watered down if anything. And what cracks me up in a sense, Jess, and we'll talk more about this when we come back. But, you know, even these corporations who are condemning like states like Georgia uh, because they uh, they want more uh, uh, accountability when it comes to elections. They say, well, we won't have the all star game. Well, we won't support Coca-Cola. We're not going to support them. But those same corporations are supporting, hey, the Chinese who are have concentration camps. But you know what, Jess? They pick and choose whatever's convenient for them. And so I really don't think that they, they're committed to the 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 cause as as much as you'd think because I think they're more committed to the economics and I think that if we parents stand up to the schools and say we're not going to be sending our kids here you know they got like heads and beds in hotels hey if your kid doesn't show up for school they don't get the tax money from the government and so we need to speak up now loudly and I'm really happy that these folks are doing this and I want to encourage because, you know, our country is in a crisis right now. We all be- believe that because of these ideologies being pumped into our kids' heads. Again, why in the world would you tell all these little kids that America is racist? Are you kidding me? Look around the world. Jesse, uh, last time I looked, 90% of the people in the world want to come what? to America. <laughs> Are you kidding me? See, this doesn't make any sense. And so it's time for us to fight back. And I'm just glad that it's not uh, just, you know... Um, you know, a Protestant group, a Catholic group. No, this is like grassroots. This is everybody's involved in this, whatever religion, whatever background. It's called this common sense. And and let's face it, common sense is not that common right now. Terry, the education is meant to teach our kids how to read, write, and think. There you go. Think critically. Exactly. Think with reason, yep. rationally. Yep. Not give them ideologies. Right. And, and uh, the catechism tells us, once again, in paragraph 407, that Education has been affected by Satan. It says it right in the catechism. I'm yeah, not making this not up. Your opinion. Look that's it up. 407. Exactly. Exactly. It's church teaching. I can prove it's been affected. You know what education that a lot of kids get? Secular humanism, moral relativism, atheism, agnosticism, liberalism. 
progressivism, socialism, and communism. These are just a few subjects run by <laughs> Satan. Hey, Jesse, why don't you really tell me what you think? When we come back, we'll talk more about this and four topics regarding the Supreme Court and other issues here on the Terry and Jesse Show on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. The Supreme Court uh, did something right, and I want to just uh, <laughs> give them some kudos because they don't always get it right. No. But let me just mention something. Terry said something in the last segment that had me cracking up, and I want to just back it up because somebody may say, wait a minute, how could you say that on Catholic Radio? Terry goes, I'm a right winger. That's right. I, and and, I'll, and I'll, I'll tell you why I'm on the right as well. But I'm, I'm going to give it to you biblically because I know you're going to say, I can't believe you made that statement on Catholic Radio. I'll tell you why. If you look at the Holy Bible... Every time the Bible talks about the right, it says those are the people that will be saved. Those on the left are those that will be damned. For example, in Matthew twenty-five forty-one, our Lord says that goats on the left, sheep on the right. Yep. That's why I have no problem saying I'm on the right. I want to be on the right hand side of, of salvation history and get to heaven. Amen. Also, something pretty interesting in John 21, verse 6, uh, the apostles couldn't catch fish. They kept casting the net on the left side. Couldn't catch nothing. Jesus Christ appears to them and says, Hey, cast the net over on the right side of the boat and you'll find something. So they cast it, and guess what? They pulled in 153 fish. The nets were almost bursting when they cast it over the right side of the boat. Uh -huh, very interesting. Here, one more. Then we'll go to the. In, in the old, I'm going to get a little bit Old Testament on. I love it. Little OT here. Hey, hit us. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 2. Here's what the Old Testament says about right and left. By the way, all this is in my book, Knocked Off the Donkey. It That's is. where I'm getting it from. <laughs> okay. Uh, it says, it, it, in Ecclesiastes 10, 2, it says, quote, A wise man's heart inclines him towards the right, but a fool's heart inclines him towards the left. Close quote. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 2. Now, if you want to get into linguistics, you know what the word... Uh, left, left side means in Latin, the Latin word for on the left means sinister. Hmm, That's what on the left means in Latin. It means sinister. Well, guess who we know is the ultimate sinister fallen angel at Satan. All right, let's go on to the topic, Terry. All right, Jess, I'm glad you clarified that. Hey, uh, the Supreme Court, here's what happened, folks. We got a um, religious freedom issue on a college campus on Monday the Supreme Court allowed a former college student to pursue a remedy against the school's officials who restricted or that restricted him when and where he could evangelize on campus. Man, after my own heart. Wow. Uh, Jess, the, the ruling was eight to one. Uh, Jess, can you guess who, who uh, dissented on that? Just take a guess. Um, uh, <laughs> liberal, progressive, uh, Fake Catholic Chief Justice John Roberts you was the lone it. dissenter. You nailed it. And the good Catholic, by the way, Justin Clarence Thomas, he's the one that authored the majority position. That That's was right. an eight to one. Terry, I'm, I'm convinced that John Roberts, this guy is in the pockets of the deep state. Oh, it's, I mean, he's this, consistently this is, doing it. This is so common sense. This, Terry, this ruling by this Catholic Justice John Roberts, yeah. opposed to Catholic. He, he's basically ruling against the great commission yep. given to us by our Lord. God have mercy Th on him. Yeah, th this guy thinks like, this guy wants to cancel God. Yeah. And he calls himself a Catholic, Terry. This is how serious this ruling was, by the way. Yeah. And, and Jesse, what I really appreciate this is that uh, this demonstrates that the plaintiff must not only establish an injury that is fairly traceable to the challenge, but also to seek a remedy that redresses the injury. Thomas wrote in the majority opinion, as you mentioned, and if the course of litigation the court finds that it can no longer provide a plaintiff, plaintiff with any effective relief, the, the case generally is moot. This case asks whether an award of nominal damage by itself can be redressed a past injury. We hold that it can. And Jesse... That I wish I, I wish Thomas was a Supreme Court oh, justice. I, I'm not. I don't know who appointed uh, Roberts. I, I, I'd have to Bush. look it up. I, it was I think Bush. it was. I think it was a Bush. It was. Yeah, I think. 
But, but who appointed him the chief justice? I, oh, may have been. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to look that up because, boy, oh, boy, this, this guy's horrible, Terry. And uh, this guy calls himself a Catholic, but again, he's a he's one of those uh, you know leftist Catholics that's he's he's on so, he's on somebody's payroll because the stuff that he keeps putting out as a Supreme Court justice is horrible. He's the one that again didn't want to take a look at any of the election stuff, and uh, yeah, it just goes on and on. But Jesse, just before you continue, that's why it's so important that President Trump had what two people he could put on. The president picks the the uh, Supreme Court justices and. Uh, let's just be honest, they're on for life, okay? So when it's yeah. done, his four years are up, or the other president's up, uh, those people stay on. So that's why it's critical that we get good people on the Supreme Court. That's right. Now, the uh, the group that was defending this lawsuit is called the ADF, Alliance Defending Freedom. I think they're evangelical. They are, and I, I support them. Oh, absolutely. I, I get their newsletter. These guys are just solid when it comes to defending uh, Christians' issues, both Catholics and Protestants. And uh, again, they litigate cases on behalf of religious freedom, and uh, they applauded the court's ruling because the court was spot on. It, it should have been eight to uh, nine to zero, but it was eight to one. <clears throat> and the ADF writes this: the uh, the general counsel Christine Wagner, who argued the case before the Supreme Court, she said this: when government officials engage in misconduct without consequences, it leaves victims without recourse, well said. undermines the nation's commitment. Yep to protecting constitutional rights, First Amendment, Amen. and emboldens the government to engage in future violations. In other words, it emboldens the, the government to continue acting like bullies. Right. So the, the lawyer, Christine Wagner, she says, we are pleased that the Supreme Court weighed in on the side of justice for those victims. So if you want a backdrop of the, of the case, the case involves Chike. Uzug Bunam. What a name. <laughs> it sounds to me like he's a, a, a African descent. Yeah. Chaik Uzu Bugnam. He's an evangelical Protestant Christian who, while attending Georgia Gwinnett College in 2016, he sought to evangelize fa- fellow students. So yep. Here's a guy from a third world country evangelizing American God kids. How embarrassing him. is that? Yeah, God love him, but how embarrassing is that? Because we've dropped the ball here in America. Exactly. And so the school had a strict policy limiting where he could evangelize and at what time he could do so. <laughs> and even after he obtained a permit to evangelize, no, so he, no. he's playing by the rules, okay? He was ordered to stop, supposedly due to complaints by fellow students, and when he sued the college officials behind the policy, they ultimately changed the policy and argued that the case was now moot. So uh, <laughs> Uzug Bunam, this, uh, this African student, he still sought nominal damages for violations of his rights, That's right. and the court ruled in his favor on Monday. I just want to ask the question, do you think if a Muslim missionary no. was, uh, was sharing the Islamic, uh, church, the, the Islamic religion's teachings at that university, do you think they would have come down on him like an 800-pound gorilla? I think not, Terry. Not only that, Jesse, any other group. I just believe that Christianity is under persecution. If it was uh, Black Lives Matter, any other group that's politically correct in the sense of the culture right now, no problem. But Christianity, stomp it out. And I'll tell you why that is, is because the devil, the devil uses all these people as the catechism calls. Yeah. So the catechism uses the word pawn says social structures of sin. Yeah. Yeah, Well, that's. Many colleges are social structures That's of right. sin. That's right. Planned Parenthood, oh, right. Playboy, Penthouse, Hustler. Yep. yep. Uh, many polit- polit- you know, congressmen, congresswomen, senators. They are them and their offices are social structures of sin. Yeah. In other words, the devil uses those already built-in structures into society and into the culture to promote evil. And that's what we're seeing here, Terry, in many colleges that, again, just teach Marxism 101. Yep. They teach liberalism and progressivism 101. And this is why, by the way, the Catholic schools were started uh, you know, at, at, at early on in this country mm-hmm. is because the Catholics were saying, no, 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 no. We're, we want to learn Western civilization through the eyes of of the church established by Christ and gave us Western civilization and all the great contributions. Unfortunately, Marxist philosophy has even infiltrated Catholicism now as well. What I'm noticing, Jesse, the theme throughout today's shows, if you think about it, is that 
through the school system. People of goodwill are standing up now, yeah. and they're taking their rights. They're not taking it on the chin and saying, oh, well, I guess uh, we can't evangelize. Oh, well, that's too bad. No, they say, wait a minute, we have a right. And I think that that's the message we're giving right now is to stand up for our Catholic faith now. This is the time. This is the Catholic moment. The culture is turned on us. We need to turn them back to Christ. And that's what I think we're doing here on Virgin Most Powerful. Yeah, you know what? It, this, this reminds me of uh, me. Uh, of uh, th- that one scene. I think it was in the movie Gladiator. Uh, no, uh, yeah, Gladiator, yeah. where uh, where he tells all the other soldiers uh, in 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 the arena. Yeah. He said he was yelling at them. He was saying, "Hold the line, hold the line." Yeah. In other words. Uh, that's what we got to do. That's what we have to do at this point. Yep. We because what does the devil want to do? Here's this age old strategy. Compromise. It, it, compromise, yes, but also the age old strategy from the garden is divide and oh, conquer. Yeah, divide and conquer. That's divide it. and conquer, and that's that. that started at the Reformation, yep. the the Greek East West schism, yep. uh, uh, modernism today. Conquer and divide, and so we have to just listen to those marching orders from all the angels that are yelling at us right now. Hold the line, hold the line, which means what? Hold on to your Catholic faith and hold high the banner of the risen Jesus Christ and the banner of the head crusher, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Sign me up, Brother Jess. Hey, folks, we're going to take a quick break, but I want to remind you, Father Don Calloway, one of my favorite Catholic priests, will have be giving two classic presentations on Saturday, April 10th. At 11 o'clock Pacific Coast time. It's free. I want you to join me. I'm going to be there with him. Also, don't forget, on Sunday, we're going to be showing the Roe versus Wade film Sunday evening at 6 o'clock here at the Sacred Heart Chapel. This is a movie that I think is going to save many, many lives when it comes to abortion. And we got to get the word out. Again, Jess just made it hold the line. Shoot, are you kidding me? How many babies have been dying on our watch? Okay, thousands, millions of babies, and we act like, you know, that's just, we can't do anything about it. We can do something about it. We can vote those particular people out of office. We can stand up for life whenever we can. And encourage good people to run for office. There's a lot of good young people out there with a good head on their shoulders that love Jesus. Back them up and have them run for office. You got it, Jess. When we come back, we're going to talk about the Easter announcement. Pay us our Lord's new body here on Virgin Most Powerful Radio, on the Terry and Jesse Show. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Hold the line. Amen. Hold the line. <laughs> yeah, that it's, it's not a brave heart. It was... Uh, Mel Gibson played William Wallace, one of Scotland's mightiest warriors, and they were facing off, uh, you know, their 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 enemies that were coming after him. And uh, the Scottish army was cheering. He was the English commander. He was saying, "Hold the line." Uh, this is exactly where we're at, Terry. Hold Amen, the line, brother. And we've got a reason to hold the line because the Lord Jesus Christ has announced the final victory through his resurrection. The victory is a done deal. Now we have to win the victory in every individual soul. Jesse, before we go on to this article, I just want to remind everybody this, that our Lord's death and resurrection gives us great hope. That's what we need to press on no matter what we are facing in our lives. He is the Lord, and he has triumphed over sin and death. Amen. And just amen to this. Evil does not have the last word. Let us cling to our Lord as we walk daily in this valley of tears. And it's a valley of tears, brother. And rejoice in his love and mercy. That's the time we're in right now, brother. Terry, once you realize that life is, is, is meant to... <laughs> it's it, it's it's a meant to, uh, it's a place where you're meant to become saints. Exactly. Saint then you're gonna you, yeah. Then you're gonna be able to understand like what's why Saint Casper of Buffalo said, yeah. uh, life uh, life on earth is a school of crosses. Exactly. Life on earth is a school of crosses. But Terry, going to Easter, yeah. this this incredible day that as Catholics, this is this is victory amen the glorious season we're celebrating it takes eight days because it's so amazing (laughs) 
We celebrate the final destruction of evil. Yep. But again, we're still engaged in a fight, every one of us, right. from an earthly point of view. The, the battle's done in eternity, mm -hmm. but in our life it has to be won as well. Mm -hmm. But it was won in eternity 2,000 years ago. Our Lord, through his Paschal mystery, reversed the sin committed in a different garden well before that, the Garden of Eden. And so every single device of evil, every corruption of the demonic, was overturned and reversed on that glorious day. That's right. As our Lord steps out of the out from the tomb mm -hmm. to the side of these Roman soldiers, they collapsed and they curled up on the ground as if they were dead. <laughs> and it wasn't due to witnessing our Lord's resurrection, but the angel ascending from heaven who rolled back the stone and the sight of him is what made them drop like dead men in terror. And for the next 40 days, the glorified body of our Lord Jesus Christ appeared and disappeared at will, witnessing to his rising from the dead. But 40 days hence, he would ascend to heaven, and the apostles would now be about the business of presenting his new body, his mystical body, the church. And his mystical body, the church now possesses the power of miracles. Yep. The power to raise people from the dead. Amen. The power to call God down from heaven in the Eucharist. Yep. The power to preach. And most importantly, the power to save souls. And although the battle of evil was completed in eternity on Golgotha, it still has to play out in time for every individual soul. Terry? You know, Jess, I'm going to continue, but I want to interject with the wonders of the Mass because that's what we're talking about, the Eucharist. Nothing on earth, nothing in heaven itself gives more glory to God and obtains more benefit for us than a single mass. And mm -hmm. so by the mass, we offer to God the greatest praise, greatest glory we could possibly desire. We give him the most perfect thanks for all the benefits he has bestowed on us. He, we make more reparation. Check this out, folks. More reparation for our faults than by the severest penances. Now, uh, as Jess was just saying, it's precisely for the reason that our Lord gave his authority to the apostles, even his own power, for them to use in, are you ready? War! We're at war with the serpent and defeat him thoroughly as he himself had done. The, the war, folks, he declared to them at the Last Supper in the upper room on Holy Thursday would last, not, to, not next week, to the end of time. And just as he was the only one capable of defeating evil in eternity so too would he be the only one capable of securing victory in time. Amen. This was the meaning of his saying to the apostles, apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine and you are the branches. Continue reading, but Jesse, you've made this point in your spiritual warfare, especially on Jesus 911. Many times our Protestant brothers go to Catholic priests when they have a situation where the devil has infected somebody and they can't do a darn thing and they go to what? A Catholic priest. That's right. You know, uh, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. intended That's right. that his saving work be carried to the ends of the earth mm -hmm. after he departed for heaven. Right. And that's very clear from his words. Mm -hmm. Not only that his ministry, but especially as he was preparing to ascend, he said, baptize all nations I will be with you all days, even until the consummation of the world. Oh, that's a great... So he commanded the apostles how to celebrate the memorial of his ongoing sacrifice, what we call the sacred liturgy or the holy sacrifice of the Mass. That's right. He commanded the apostles how to call him down from heaven in the flesh and blood to feed his followers until the end of time, but not just in soul, but also in body, in order to prepare our flesh for the resurrection of the dead on the last day. And the church, which is his earthly mystical body, yeah. would feed our earthly bodies throughout the ages until he returns on the clouds of heaven to bring us back and present us to his Father. This is the point of Christ's new body. It, it's not just to teach, but primarily to nourish us with his own flesh and blood and to raise an army of followers to fight in his name until the end of time. And for and to fight for what? For our own salvation in the process, our loved ones, our family, our Amen. church. And guess what? Just like in, in actuality, an army needs food. Yep. Okay? 
They, you, you can't have soldiers out there starving. And, and so our Lord knew that an army needs food. So he would be the food provided, not just metaphorical or symbolic, but actual food. As he says in John 6, for my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed. So Easter is the announcement of final victory. It's a glimpse into our futures of glorified bodies as long as we engage in the battle every day of our lives. And also what? Stay well nourished. Not with In-N-Out or Tommy's Burgers, (laughs) with the Holy Eucharist. Amen, Jesse. And just the other day I gave that uh, quote from Peter Kreef's book, How to Destroy Western Civilization. His statistics were showing how Christians, of all Christians, have not bought into the message. They are Christian by name. The way to get people committed is by giving them their hope in Jesus Christ. And that's what Jesse just did. We have a horizontal and vertical aspect of our faith. But the vertical aspect that leads us to God, for many of us, it's lacking. And that's what the Mass is. When we understand that the Mass is not just going to some service as a Protestant, we're going to have services today. No! We're going to be at that reenactment of Calvary. We're going to be present at that one eternal sacrifice. We're going to receive not a symbol, but the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. When that time comes that Christianity and our Catholic faith understands the Mass, evangelization will follow. That's my take, Jess. Remember, the month of April is the month of the Holy Eucharist. Mm -hmm. The Eucharist is the center of our faith. Yep. And try to receive our Lord this month as often as possible. Mm. Try to make as many visits to the Blessed Sacrament as you can. Try to make sure that this month you kind of rekindle your commitment to the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, to spending time before the Blessed Sacrament. I don't know what the month of April is in America or in other parts of the world, but I know what the month of April is in Roman Catholicism. It's the month of the Holy Eucharist. And remember... You are soldiers of Christ. And as a soldier of Christ, soldiers need food. What food is going to give us the ability to fight the good fight of faith? The food called the Holy Eucharist, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. And also remember that the Holy Eucharist is specifically tied into our glorified body that we will receive at the general judgment. Terry, uh, we can't say enough about this day. No. And, uh, and, and here's something also very interesting just for people that are wondering that uh, the, the crucifix, which on Good Friday, that demonstrates the power of God's love or God's total love for the human race. Mm-hmm. But the resurrection on Sunday, it demonstrates God's full power over death. So the crucifix shows God's total power or total love over the sinner. The resurrection shows God's full power over death. We need them both. You got it. I want to give a couple saints comments about the Mass. Saint Otto of Cluny says, The happiness of the world comes from the sacrifice of the Mass. Mm. Timothy of Jerusalem, The world would have been destroyed long ago because of sins of men had it not been for the Mass. There is nothing that appeases the anger of God so much, nothing that obtains for us so many blessings as the Mass. St. Lawrence, he says, no human tongue can describe the immense favors and blessings which we receive from the Mass. The sinners obtain pardon, the good man becomes more holy, our faults are corrected, and our vice is uprooted by hearing holy Mass. Last one. By one Mass, which we hear in the state of grace, we give God more pleasure and obtain for ourselves more benefits, favors, than by the longest and most painful pilgrimages. Jesse, sign me up. It's just a good time management to get to daily Mass. I'm going to call it out right now. I mean, Jess says well, you're, on, you're not on the team if you're not praying the rosary. I understand you got duties if you're a busy mom and dad, but if you're retired, dude, stand, pick up your bat and swing it for Jesus. Get the daily Mass. Get to make reparation of for the sins of the world, for yourself, because the Mass is the source and summit of the Christian life. Two things you can do if you can't get to Mass for whatever reason, work, uh, health, whatever reason. Make a spiritual communion with Jesus. Mm. It's a spiritual communion prayer. Calling our Eucharistic Lord into your heart every day, that that should be a given. Also, 
you can also send your guardian angel to That's attend right. mass for you. That's right. There's a prayer. You can look it up on the internet. It's on the La Daute app. It's sending your guardian angel to go to church, to go to mass for you, and to bring you the graces of the mass to the extent he's able. So there are ways, Terry, that say if you're locked up in That's prison, right. if you're in a hospital oh, yeah. bed, there are ways to mystically go to mass. Absolutely. Again, uh, up next, Matt Arnold. I see him in the studio next to me. Uh, you want to listen to it. If you uh, can't listen on AM or FM stations, go to our website, which is virginmostpowerfulradio.org, and you can listen to all of our shows, our past shows, by hitting podcasts. Jesse, uh, this is a good question because we just talked about it. That's living in the state of grace. What state should we be living in, brother? Precisely, state of grace. Yeah. Don't live in a state of mortal sin. And uh, and uh, get the message out there. Let's call people to holiness. That's uh, the job of the lay Catholic. And I hope to see you on Sunday at 6 p.m. at the Sacred Heart Chapel to watch the movie Roe vs. Wade. And hopefully that movie will persuade more lives being saved here on the Terry and Jesse Show. May God richly bless you. And again, up next, Matt Arnold on Virgin Most Powerful Radio.